All right, you guys. Okay, we're super pumped today for our, so normally, Julie, we have a weekly mentor call where it's basically, we actually split them up by rank. So they're very focused on what they need at that time. But for this week, since we get you, we just did one combined. So we are super lucky. If you guys don't know who Julie is, I'm actually going to let you tell us your, all of your things, all of your things and tell us about your, a little snippet of your story first so that they can understand who they're talking to and who they're asking questions to. But basically you guys, she is like the epitome of consistency and just longevity in this business. She's been coaching for 11 years, right? Mm -hmm. Nine of those years, she has been elite. Are you the only one that's ever been nine years or is there someone else? Just Melissa McAllister and I. So Melissa McAllister and her, the only coaches mm -hmm. in the entire network who have been elite nine years, which is incredible. So Julie, tell us a little bit about you and then we're just going to open it up and we can ask you all the things. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. This is so exciting to get to share and talk. It's so funny when, um, and Micah, you, I know you know this too, like you, you share something with another team and they'll be like, oh my gosh, like that was amazing. I'm like, really? Because I say that same thing to my own coaches and they're like, you're dumb. So, you know, it's just fun to like talk to people who are smiling or like, yay. So you've already made my day and I don't even have to say anything. So that's great. Um, I have been a coach 11 years. I live in Carmel, Indiana. So I live at 131st Street and where you all will be in July is Zero Street. So I live 131 streets from where Summit is. And if you happen to be in New Orleans when they announced that Summit was in Indianapolis, you probably um, either saw slash heard <laughs> my reaction because it was like um, 10 years in the making. It was, I mean, it's just the coolest ever. It's not, I can't even put into words how cool it is to go downtown Indianapolis and see it plastered in, in our stuff to see the, the logos everywhere. And then to walk into Lucas oil and it was everywhere. I mean, poor Darren Ashby, my husband and I walked in and Darren Ashby and the whole recognition team were kind of standing there my husband and I walked in and I like, I started crying. I was like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, this is amazing. So hopefully I will see all of you in July right here in Indianapolis. Um, this is where my team started. We started right here in this home. I live in the same home it, right through there is the same kitchen that we started. We lived here for, um, we measure our life in seasons because my husband is a college football coach. So I think this will be our 13th season. I think, I think that's right. Uh, we have three daughters, and I have one who's upstairs asleep right now um, because <laughs> she's like 23, and I guess that's what 23-year-olds do. They sleep till it's 11.04. She's still in bed. But she's, she's in transition from working a full-time job, and she's going back to grad school, so she's kind of home in the interim and blah, blah, blah. So I have one home. I have one who's in school in New York City and one who's a senior on spring break right now who will be in college next year somewhere. So our lives kind of revolve around that. They've, these daughters of mine have watched me grow this business from potluck dinners right there in that kitchen to hosting the biggest family reunion in my town. So it's been really cool to watch them watch me and see that and really understand without me ever having to say it or parent on it or anything, the fact that you really can set any goal that you want and make it happen through patience and persistence. And you can also set some goals that don't happen and how you continue to, to stay with it and continue to believe in what you can do. And so they've watched all the seasons and, and the, the valleys and the highs and the lows and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's been pretty cool. And last year, I was on stage for the super workout on Saturday with Autumn and Josie, my middle one was backstage with me. So she was like hanging out with all the traders and taking pictures. And I mean, there just aren't really words to describe how cool it is to, to have your kids watch you do these kinds of, not just backstage with a trainer, just to grow a business, especially as a female and to have three daughters, you know, of course they fully expect that dad will be working and having a business, but for mom to be working and having a business and for that business to actually be um, the catalyst for everything we do as a family, like dad's salary is 
cool, but mom's salary surpassed that a long time ago. And they know that. And for them to know that and understand that that moms can do that, females can do that, with zero experience. I was a high school English teacher who sort of fell into fitness, became a master trainer for Shalene, and, and then continued to pursue that love of fitness into something bigger when the Beachbody opportunity came along. So I had never owned a business. I don't really like math or like strategy or anything like that. I just really love health and fitness. I really love people. I like teaching and talking and, and hopefully inspiring people to do more. I believe deeply in our human potential and that's all I brought with me into this business. So if you don't have business experience and you think that that's holding you back, that's just a mindset, that's just a choice. Uh, I believe everything in this business really is comes down to a choice. I don't love getting up at 5 a.m., but I do it because that's when I can get my workout in. I don't love thinking about my Instagram all the time, but I do it because that's how we build a business. There's a lot of pieces that you might not love, but when you do them and you choose to do them, you get to add them all up into a life that you do love. So that's what I've been able to do. I love this business so much. I can't imagine it not being a part of our lives. And I really feel like with how we've now transitioned to digital and, and all the new products and programs, like I don't know about you, but I can't wait for July to get here to get Jericho's program. Like everything new that comes out, everything new that we do, I feel like we're just barely tapping into our potential as a business. Like we're just getting started. So I think that's pretty cool. And I, I really think we're in the right time at the right place with the right people doing the right thing, even when it's hard and it, and it's hard and that's okay. So that's a little bit about kind of where, where I am. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Melissa, I was totally thinking about you when she was saying that part about teaching and how she fell out of fist. I'm like, dude, this is Melissa. <laughs> She's one of my top leaders. So I love it. Um, okay. Just before we dig in, I want to hear like your perspective on, cause you were here from the beginning. Like you've seen it evolve. You've seen yeah. everything change. Like why, why is what we have now such an epic time to be in the business because I, I feel like still some people get held back with it's okay. saturated. It's hard. It's yeah, social media is day. not me. It's oh. whatever. what up? Can I have one of the right yeah. Here? Yes. Later. You can have one. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> like what would you say to the person who's kind of doubting, like if this is the right time for them or if it's, if they've got in too late or any of those things that you, you hear come up sometime since you have a like, perspective. I think that there's going to be doubts no matter what, when you get in the business at what time you get in the business, because I see, okay, so I've been a coach for 11 years. Um, there are probably pieces of the business that might be a smidge easier for me. And I don't mean easier, maybe just more habitual just because I've been doing them for a while. But there's also pieces of the business that aren't as habitual or as easy to me. So, you know, the doubts that I have in my life, might be different than doubts that you might have, but doubts are doubts and fears are fears and that's just life. So I don't know that, that doubts and fears are specific only to this business. I think they're just specific to being a human and no matter where we are and what industry we're going to do. I mean, I taught high school English for nine years and it wasn't until like my ninth year that I could walk in the classroom and go, I think I know what I'm doing now. You know, it took me that long to kind of figure out what I was doing. So I think if you're newer and you come into the business, you might have an advantage because you have this amazing, beautiful, warm market that no one's tapped into that uh, you can tap into. If you're more veteran, you've got experience and confidence that only comes with time. It only comes with time. So I don't know that there's a right time to be in the business. There's only just right now. And with the the digital piece that we have with the programs and the nutritional products that we have combine that with the community, which is the game changer. There's, there's nobody else that does what we do. And I'm speaking from a fitness perspective because I teach at the YMCA. I've taught longer than I've been a coach. I've taught group fitness and you know, only the really, really good instructors will notice when someone's not, in their class and reach out to them and, me and message them or whatever, you know, so you could join a gym and no one cares if you show up or not, but by golly, if you join a challenge group and you don't show up, we notice. And that I think is the game changer and always will be the game changer. I believe that people are craving more community and craving more connection now. And 
some of those days of just the really pretty Instagram feeds are, are kind of going by the wayside. They really want more substance and content. And we offer that. We are the connection and the community. And, you know, I just, I talked about this with my team this week, but I made a post about it that if you, I believe that fitness is transformative. I, I believe in what we do being so transformational from the inside out because it is health and fitness. But if you believe that this is only a health and fitness business, you're missing the point. Because if someone would have looked at me 11 years ago and not offered the business to me because I was already fit and active, they would have been missing that I needed community and I needed income. So we offer these pieces that nobody else offers and we, we have to keep that in the forefront of our mind all the time because if we're just looking at people who need it for the fitness, we're missing that they want community. If we're looking at people who already seem like they're tapped in their community, we might be missing that they need the income. If we look at people, because in my county right here in Carmel, Indiana, Hamilton County, we're the wealthiest county in Indiana. I live in a teeny tiny little 400, 1400 square foot home, and I get to have the same school district as the people who are across the street with a ginormous home. Uh, this is just where we've always lived, and but it's a very wealthy county. If I'm looking at these women and thinking they don't need the income opportunity, I'm missing that they might need the fitness in the community. We offer so much more than what other companies, systems, organizations, gyms, whatever offer. Uh, I don't think our, our only competition is Netflix, really you know, and the couch. It's not, we don't, we don't really have any other competition because what we offer is so much more than what other people offer. And I love kind of learning from other places who are, who tap into some of those pieces. I love watching Soul Cycle and what they do and how they build a community, but they don't pay me a paycheck. So they're missing that piece. You know, I love taking other fitness classes because I love fitness, but that's not my community. So I don't, I just don't think anyone ha has what we have at this point, what we can offer at this point. And if you think this market is saturated, are you high? Because there's like four, there's not even 400,000 of us. There's like 350,000 coaches and like 11 billion people in the world. Like that makes no sense. Say that out loud. And I was an English teacher, not math. Like that's just dumb. So no, it's not saturated. And also I've been a coach for 11 years. Success Club has been in existence for nine, eight of those years, so ever since Shakeology came out. Shakeology debuted in March, and I think March whatever year that was. So this is, what, 2009, something like that. And so that's, I think, when the Success Club program came out. So I hit Success Club in March 20, 2009. I did not hit it in April, mostly because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And then I hit it in May 2009 and haven't missed it since what is that, 107 months or something redonkulous? So please tell me that we're oversaturated. Just say that again, because I mean, I've managed to find three people every month for 107 months. Let's that need this. That for two seconds. Like, what do you feel like is the most essential thing that you've done for 107 months that has kept you consistent finding new people? Because when people don't do some of the things, they run out of people. You just do. So what yeah. have you made sure you've always done? Uh, I'm just extremely, stupidly, annoyingly consistent. Uh, I am never not working out, and I'm never not drinking my shake, and I'm never not using now the performance line, and I'm never not talking about it on social media. And when Time Hop comes up or Facebook Memories comes up, and it shows me a post from 2010 or 20. Uh, 2009, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's about either my family or me working out or drinking Shakeology nine years ago. So I am like stupidly, annoyingly, like almost you don't like me consistent because I just really, really love what we do. But that also lends itself to when someone is finally ready, I've just always been there doing the thing. Like you can't fake it. You know, I even use that line now. People, I'm like, okay, literally I can't fake it for this long. I'm not that good of an actress. That's my youngest daughter who wants to be in musical theater. That's not me. And I can't fake that I like fitness or Shakeology 
that long. I just can't. So if you're looking for someone who really believes in the power of fitness and health and how transformative it can be, it's going to be me. And if you look back nine or 10 years, I was posting about it nine or 10 years ago when we were getting on social media. I think that's the biggest key. And what I've had to get better at doing, because this business is a business of constant evolution. And if I'm doing the same thing I was doing when I started, I'd still be on my space. Okay, so clearly that's not where we are now. So what I have to continue to remember to get better at doing all the time is making sure that everything I put out on social media has a call to action. You know, back when I first started, the first three or four years when Beachbody was super new, I could post about it and I could um, connect pe with people who were taking my classes and it was a little easier. They just sort of kind of, came to me a little more easily. I didn't really have to post a call to action necessarily. And I have to do that now. I have to do it because that's evolution. I have to really be more intentional about saying, I would like you to message me today. This is what I want you to do. Um, that's just part of growth and learning and getting better because there are so many more people on social media. There's a lot of white noise. We just have so many more distractions now than we did before. I mean, when I first started the business, pretty sure I had a flip Phone. You know, I didn't, I didn't have this amazing tool, but the amazing tool does have a lot more distractions. There's a lot more white noise out there. So I have to be much more intentional about, so that's what I have to do, Mike, is I have to really leverage and also talk about my consistency. I, I have to be less, sometimes I don't like to really talk about myself. So uh, I don't, I have to be less wonky about the fact that, hi, do you want a coach that's going to be showing up? That's me. You know, like I have to be okay with talking about that because that really is my superpower. Um, and I have to be intentional about putting a call to action in there. I don't do as well. This is me personally. You're asking me to share my story. I don't do as well reaching out to people with a cold invite. I do better when I've continued to put stuff out there with calls to action and the people reach out to me or I've had, or we start some conversations because I don't want someone that I have to drag along to work out. My person is someone who already likes fitness. Maybe they've lost their way. Maybe they used to work out and now with kids, they've sort of lost their way. Maybe what they're doing for fitness isn't working for them. They need to level up. I want someone who already likes fitness. If I have to drag them along, I can't, that's just not my person. So I find that I do better when someone reaches out to me a little more than when I, and, but that's only this at this space in my business. Now it's April 4th. I don't have any success club points yet. So like I'm freaking out right now like this. I, I'm freaking out. It's April 4th. I don't have any success club points yet. I need to get something happening this weekend, which might mean, okay, I may have to do some of those more intent. I may have to reach out to people myself now and not just rely on the social media because because that's what I need to do. Okay, cool. That's what I need to do. You can't fight it. There, that's dumb energy wasted fighting the thing you have to do. So don't do, stop, don't do that. I can't fight it. I can't go, well, I've been a coach 11 years. They should just come to me. I get better people when that happens, but that doesn't mean I don't also have to do the work on my end. So it's this sort of kind of give and take. And there might be some months that what I'm putting out is really resonating with people and I'm getting those people early in the month. There might be some months where I have to go after them just a little more intentionally because they're not coming to me quite as easily. Okay, cool. And then I, you just kind of play with that sort of balance. So I hope that helps answers that a little bit. Yeah, totally. I want to expand upon that big picture. Why? Because the same thing <laughs> on the first of every month, when I see my successful points at zero, I get that anxious, like, okay, let's go. I'm breaking out. Yes. Who can I get on the board? Why does success club matter and why should that be the absolute foundation non-negotiable in your business long-term? I think success club is the living, breathing embodiment of what we do as coaches, period. Because what we do as coaches is connect people with solutions at work. We know the solutions at work are fitness, nutrition, community, not just fitness. No. And not just nutrition. And not either one of those two without community. No, no, it's fitness, it's nutrition, it's community. 
when I was teaching group exercise, even when I first became a coach, but when I was teaching group exercise and I was doing it before I was coaching. So before Shakeology, before, you know, more nutritional knowledge that I might've had, a, you know, just sort of in the exercise community in general and the, the culture of group exercise 17 years ago, literally you guys, I was working out I, all the time. I would teach 15 classes a week. I still had a personal trainer. I was doing trainings on the weekends. It was stupidness. So I had fitness, but I didn't have nutrition and I really didn't have community. So I was getting no results. I was wondering why I was sore all the time. Duh. And I was wondering why I couldn't lose any weight. Duh. Cause I had no nutrition. I had no community. When those things started to come into my my life and I started to dial into them more, my life started to change, my business started to change. That's why Success Club is important because the combination of the three is what gets people results, period. So we can talk all day long about, I'm gonna hook someone up with a beach bar, that's awesome. We want them in, in our ecosystem, we want them in our world. But if they want results and you truly wanna help them on a deep, deep level, it's fitness, it's nutrition, it's community. That in our business is a metric called success club. So if we aren't hooking people up with these things, we're not doing what we said we wanted to do when we became a coach. To me, it's that simple. Others might disagree and you want to get into the, the gray of it. To me, we don't need to overcomplicate it. Can we stop overcomplicating it and making it this big emotional thing? We said we wanted to be coaches. You are on this call because you want to help others. You want to impact others. You want to make a difference in the lives of others. And you said you wanted to connect people with solutions at work because they work for you. So you wanted to do that. So stop making it emotional. And this, they said, no, and it's too expensive. That's just a bunch of BS. Stop making it that big. It's not that big of a deal. Connect three people with our solutions at work in a challenge pack situation because we know that's what works and don't make it any more emo than that period otherwise you're like my high schooler don't do that it's just it has to be a challenge pack because that those are the pieces that we know work period that's why micah love it i love it i love it i love it okay another question that came up what is your daily slash weekly home and work personal routine what does your day look like let's talk about the morning that's my favorite thing to talk about so I'm a morning person and I don't want to hear from anyone else how you're not. I live with one who is not, but here's the thing. When he has 6 a.m. practice down at Hankel Fieldhouse, he's up at 4.30 in the morning, whether he likes it or not. It doesn't matter. It is what it is. So I don't care whether you're a morning person or not. Morning is powerful. The morning for, I don't know if there are any men on this call. I'm just going to assume there are not. So the morning for women is everything because women you are the north star in your family's life you set the tone you set the attitude you set the choices nothing really happens without you being the guiding post and if you don't take care of you straight away first thing in the day you can't take care of anybody else case in point i've been getting up my group and i've been getting up we started it last fall. I'm a morning workout person anyway, but last fall we started it leading into Transform 20 and then continued it through these two rounds of Transform 20. And I will continue it now because it's such a game changer, working out at 6 a.m., pressing play at 6 a.m. So that means I get up at 5, I press play at 6 a.m. That one piece, because when I was in the Insanity Max 30 Coach Test Group, I pressed play at 5.30. Now, the reason why I pressed play at 5.30 was because I was also teaching way too many classes. So I had to get it in before I taught classes. But I also pressed play at 5.30 because Melanie Mitra was in that test group with me. And we, although we never said it, were silently competing with each other as to who was going to press play earlier and who was going to be done and post their picture in the test group earlier. So that, that was like going on behind the scenes friendly competition, but it was funny. Like at the end of the day or at the end of the group, we were like, I was competing against you. I learned in that experience that I had to do it at 530 because I was still teaching classes, but how much better the rest of my day was when I pressed play at 530 AM. And so I brought that back into my life last fall 
rather than getting up and getting you know people off to school and people off to work and then pressing play i went back to getting up at 5 a.m pressing play at 6 a.m and transform 20 plus a 10 minute app you're still done by 6 30. i then start to wake jesse up she's my only one left at home i make her shake i take her shake up to her i wake her up again because she's in high school and she doesn't get up the first time and then I wake her up again <laughs> and tell her, this is it. This is really the last time. you got to go. And then at 7.15, I take her to school. Or she drives, kind of depends on the day. And then come home, see my husband, blah, 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 take care of the dogs, do some like little housey kind of things. And then I try to have really from 8 to 11 as solid work time. Don't sleep on this. I haven't always had that. I have built this business not having that. I built this business teaching group fitness classes in that time frame. So it's just really been this year, 2018, 2019, that I've had that solid block of time. Don't sleep on that and think, well, sure, it's easy for you. No, it's not. Jessie is 17. She was seven, six when I started this business. So don't give me some BS about how that's easy for you because your girls are older. I built this business with my girls not being older period. So I have that block of time now. So from eight to 11, that is emails. That is, I, I use this. This is from a book called, or a company called Intentional Change. And I just love this productivity journal because the blank pages, they have a quote at the top. I'm all about, I'm memorizing this teacher. I'm all about words. And then you kind of prioritize your, your to-dos for the day. Notice they're not 20 on there. There's five five priorities for the day, plus some notes. But why I love it in this notebook form is because I can go back and look at it if I want to at any point in time and go, did I get that done? And if I didn't, I may need to continue to work on that. So I, I really discovered I love this notebook form because it really helps me keep track. It's called intelligent change. So I write that, I write down my to-dos. I have a pen and paper calendar. This is from Christy Wright's Business Boutique. She's part of Dave Ramsey organization. I love her so much. So I use this goal planner because it too has quotes. It has Bible verses. It's got goals for the week. It's got um, things I'm doing for self-care, things I'm doing for my family. So I work on that. I check in with my challengers. I look at graphics I might need to make. I look at mentor stuff I might need to do. I just am in my work zone from about eight to 11. And then because I'm a fitness person and I really like to work out, I will then go probably take a, like a Pilates or a yoga class around noon. Otherwise I might not leave my computer cause no one's home. So I don't have to. I've never had that really before, you know? And when my middle daughter was in high school, um, she had early release because she was a high level dancer and then she was homeschooled. She did online school. So for two years, like she was here. And then last year, that same daughter had four major surgeries on her hip. She's no longer dancing. So for all of 2018, right through that doorway is my living room. And she was sitting on the couch right in there, which was sucky for her. And also a little bit for me, because like, it's just weird to do videos and stuff when people are in your home. So I have really, I've not had just time like by myself, you know? Um, so I do from eight to 11 is solid work time. Noon, I usually take a class to make myself get off the computer. And then anything that I have in the afternoon, whether it's I'm getting my hair cut or I have to run to the UPS store or I've got to drop this, you know, whatever, like kind of try and do that because at 320, if Jesse's coming home from school, I don't want to be on anything or doing anything when she comes home from school because starting next September, she won't be here. So I want to make sure at 320, I'm not on or doing anything, or maybe she needs a snack after school. She's going right into rehearsal, whatever. And then the evening's just kind of whatever it's doing. Is it team calls? Is it, does she, is Jesse home? Does she have practice? Is Jenna home right now? You know, evening's just kind of, blah, blah. so who knows what's happening in the evening? I can control the morning all the way up till noon. I control that time. So if I get up at 5 a.m., I've got seven hours in my head that I can control. So that's what I do. 
And then the rest of the day kind of shuffles as, as it shuffles. My husband, as I said, is a football coach. So when we're in season, he's gone. Some of them, we have away games, we have home games, we have people in, you know, any given weekend, I may have people staying here or people coming in for the game. So I just know I can control from about 5 a.m. to noon. And so I really want to make sure that I do that. Does that help? Yes, that's perfect. I love it. Love it. And I only teach one time a week now. I still teach class just one time a week because I really love teaching. It really fills my own personal bucket, but I teach on Saturdays because um, I think Saturdays are just the most fun day to teach on. No one really wants to work out like on Monday, but everyone really loves working out on Saturday. So I like to teach Saturday mornings at the Y. I make $11 an hour, just like everybody else. You can't send a free girl to college at $11 an hour. That's why I build a beach buddy business. So can we talk about that for a sec? Um, hold on one second. She's the cutest ever. She's so loud when she wakes up. Um, your husband, for those of you that didn't catch it, he's a college football coach, college head coach. He'll do that for the rest of his life. Like he absolutely loves it. Do you never plan to retire him? Like what has been your driving? No. no one needs to be home with me all the time. No, no, no. So what keeps you showing up and pushing for big goals and just because I feel like some people run into that. They're like, well, I don't really have huge goals. So why would I work hard? Like how do people evolve and let their why evolve and their purpose and all that stuff? Um, that is interesting to me because I don't understand someone who wants to be average. So that is mind blowing to me. I don't understand the concept of ever being satisfied. So just because we may have achieved one goal that the business says is a big goal. I am so far from, achieving the, the stuff that I think we're capable of in, in this business myself as a human female being on the planet. There's so many things that I think that I, I can do that I haven't done. There's so many things I think my team can achieve that we haven't done. There's so many people on my team who um, are, you know, need, need guidance and mentorship and momentum for our Lord's sake. If we just get some momentum, <laughs> really really great could someone just get an emerald why is that so hard <laughs> I don't know um why is diamond so hard I don't understand it so I just think there's a lot of people on my team and there's a lot of goals across the board that we haven't achieved and I don't like average so just because you achieve one goal that the company you happen to partner with says is a big goal that's awesome. Um, but I just don't think that gets to determine if I'm done. I, I just don't understand average and I don't understand not wanting more. Um, the more I do, the more I earn, which hi, I like money a lot. I have three girls I'm trying to send to college. And for a long time, my husband and I were really poor, really, really poor. So I, um, I, we need money. We needed it badly. And you know, you get to a point where you're like, well, I feel like I'm comfortable, especially here in where I live, you know, I've, I'm pretty comfortable, whatever. I'm like, really? Uh, a, I'm never comfortable. And B, the more I earn, if I don't need it, there's a lot of people who do. There's a lot of people who do. And the more I earn, the more I can give away. If, you know, that's what, that's what I want to do. There's a lot of arts organizations here in Indiana that have affected my daughter's lives that I'd really like to give to. Well, I have to get to a point that I can do that, you know? So I just don't ever, I don't ever feel satisfied. I can feel happy and content without being satisfied. I think there's a difference. I can really, really love this life that we are creating and still really, really feel like there's more to create. <laughs> the two, you can be really good with where you are and still want more. Absolutely. I love it. Love it. <laughs> okay. Lauren asked, what kinds of things do you do in your challenge groups to enhance the community feel? Oh, great question. Um, I will say this. I think that there are some groups that just naturally have more chemistry than others. And those particular groups, you could literally do nothing but post the template challenge track guide, whatever. And they would be like, this is awesome. Just because that's who they are. And there will be other groups that I could stand on my desk and like spin around in a circle and post the video in the group. They'd be like, whatever. 
So I think there is some, as with everything in this business, as with everything in life, there's sort of a kind of a formula, a balance. And I think some of the challenge group balance is we beat ourselves up a lot and, and I do, I see it in fitness. So I, ha, I am able to see it in a different application, but we beat ourselves up a lot sometimes for a challenge group, not being magical and amazing and whatever. Um, I can teach a really great class sometimes and they're just not in it. They're just not here for it. And they're just, it doesn't really matter what I do. You know, that happened on Monday. I'm like, where are you? There's it doesn't really matter. I think you can do a really great challenge group. And sometimes they're just not there for it. They don't matter. And then there are things like fun little handstand contests and fun little recipe contests and, and just sharing your Shakeology and sharing, you know, maybe a fun, different post-workout picture, you know, take it outside, go outside, you know, especially in Indiana, if it's springtime and we finally get sun, you know, go outside and take your picture in the sun. So I think there are some things you can do, but I think it actually starts more with the chemistry of the people. Um, I do think that the more you show up doing the program with them, that's a game changer. I also only run, this is an antithesis I know to a lot of coaches, but I only run one group at a time. I just do. I just, my brain space can't take a bunch of different groups. I just run one group and yes, it's program specific. And so yes, they're doing the program. It, that's just how I've done it for 11 years, which doesn't make it the best or right way. But anyone that's coming into my ecosystem now, if they want to be in my challenge group, they're going to have to get ultimate portion fixed and do 21 day fix with us. If they want to do Insanity Max 30, awesome. I'll answer their questions or maybe I'll find someone on my team, which is why the name of the company is called Team Beachbody and not you, Beachbody, I'll find someone on my team who might be running a, a general group and I might put them in that because then they can still get support and accountability that way. But if you're coming into my group right now, you're coming and doing 21 Day Fix and Fix Extreme. I don't have time or brain space to run a bunch of different programs. That's just me because I equate it to group fitness and no one comes into my group fitness class and I go, hey, what do you want to do today? No, I come in with the plan. This is what we're doing. And if you're coming into my kickboxing class, that's awesome that you want to Zumba, but that ain't happening in my class today. If you come into my class, we are kickboxing, period. So Zumba would be something else. And that's just sort of how I run my challenge groups. I love that too. I love it. There's so much energy around what you're doing. I feel like naturally that usually happens. Like people just gravitate to what you're doing, what you're sharing about. They're like, I want to do that. So right. naturally that happens a lot, but you do have like those stragglers that sometimes you're like, why are you doing turbo jam? <laughs> I know. That was still eight years ago. What are we doing now? <laughs> How about morning meltdown? <laughs> yes, right? Okay. Minerva had a great question for you, like specific to where she's at. So she says, so many beach body coaches are so young. I'm 47. I own a gym and I'm an English professor. You are my soul sister for sure. Do you have any tips for tapping into the 40 to 60 year old? Or like, what's your target? Like what, yeah. what do you do as a not 20 year old beach body coach? Yes, I agree. I agree with that. And it's interesting because, so I don't know how many of you have teenage slash maybe early twenties kids, but they're a goldmine of information. Because if I post something that's dumb, I mean, my daughter's like, you got to take that down. Or if they see someone else post something that's what they think is kind of cringy or that they would find embarrassing, they will send it to me and go, don't ever post anything like this. Like this would be, I love that. That's a great barometer, you know, because sometimes they're a little bit more tapped into what's working on social media than I am. You know, if you're in your forties, you sort of came into social media as an addition. If you're my daughter who's 17, she doesn't know anything but that. So of course they maneuver and navigate that world better than someone who's older. Of course they do that. And that's okay. It's no different than if I go in and teach my kickboxing class versus someone who just started it. You know, I, I'm going to navigate that world better than a newer person. It just is what it is. So they, they understand it a little bit better. So I listen to teenagers. If you don't have one personally, find one. You don't live in a vacuum. There are people around you that have teenagers. Ask them. Just ask them. My coaches will ask my daughter sometimes. They're like, what do you think about this? And they'll tell them straight up if they think it's, it's good or not. But I also think my target audience isn't necessarily someone who's my age. My target audience 
is who I was when I became a coach. Because when I became a coach, we needed income badly. I needed community. And I really, even though I would have not told you that I needed the fitness and the nutrition, I needed the fitness and nutrition. I needed my own workouts that weren't me teaching. And I certainly needed the nutrition uh, education. Desperately needed the community and desperately needed the income. I knew there had to be more in life for us. My husband as a professional with two master's degrees, me with a college degree, you know, both pursuing our passions and having to ask our in-laws for a loan because we couldn't get to the end of the month. I knew there had to be more in life for us, but I didn't know how to get there. That's who I was. So that's who I'm looking for which is not the same as the person I am now. But the person I am now can guide that person down the path that I've already walked. So I want this person back here who might be 10 or so years younger than me and their kids are 10 or so years younger than mine. And I want to help guide them down this path that I have walked so that they can 10 years from now look back and go, I just got to go on a cruise that my company paid for. And that was awesome. Or I just booked a family vacation and I am paying for that with my Beachbody money and I didn't know that I would ever be able to do it. When we booked our very first cruise as a family, I didn't do the Beachbody cruise. I don't know if you did it, Micah, the last time they did the Beachbody cruise. I think it was like 2015, some 2016. I didn't do it because we had never gone on a cruise as a family. I wanted to experience that. If you're around me very long, you will learn very quickly. My favorite people are the people who live in this house with me. So I wanted to experience that that travel situation with my family. We had never done that before. So I didn't go on that cruise. And then I booked a Disney cruise for us and I paid for it with my money. Yeah. Me, this little stay at home mom doing this little fitness thing, you know, who was a high school English teacher who made at my highest, what, $35,000 a year. My first year as a high school English teacher, I made 16, one, six, comma, zero, zero, zero. Nobody taking a Disney cruise on $16,000 a year and nobody sending their kids to college on that either. That's more than Jenna's tuition for a semester. So I, I just am looking for those people who were me and trying to help them get to now. And then 10 years from now, I'll look for the people that are 10 years behind me and how can I get them to now, you know? And so that I'm not really looking for people um, also I'm kind of cooler than some of the people who are my age. I just am. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I can't I just can't handle the moms. I'm like, that, that, put some lip gloss on. Come on. So I'm looking for the person who's 10 years, 10 years behind me so I can help them get to here so they don't have to struggle, so they don't have to put their head on the pillow at night and wonder how am I going to pay these bills or how am I going to say yes to my kids. I want that woman. I want that woman because I want her to get to – to now where she can say yes, because that sucks saying no to your kids. Amen. Perfect. Okay, Melissa has a great one. What do you feel is the best advice for someone who's kind of been floating, but really wants to pick up speed and wants to grow and kick some booty? I think it's kind of a combination of a lot of things. Um, what we tend to see in this business, what I experienced, and I think what we tended to see last year and what we see what we've seen really for 11 years is going 100% balls to the wall in with a program. I mean, all of it. I mean, the program, the nutrition, every single, not kind of, I mean, all freaking in. When I did that with Matt, Max 30, even though I was still teaching, I was scared to death to do that because Sean really, really scared me. Uh, when I did that with Max 30, <clears throat> my life changed. And so my business changed. And I think we see that over and over again in this business that number one, you really have to go 100% in with a program and its nutrition. And then it only matters in this business if you're sharing that because I don't know if any of you have ever had this. I know that I have, you know, a look kind of back in the day and sometimes my coaches will where like your cousin will buy from another beach body coach and you're like, wait, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And it's cause they don't know. So you have to go 100% in on a program institution and you have to share it like so much so that you feel like you're being annoying. 
When I was learning to be a master trainer with Shalene Johnson, she taught us, and it's so interesting because my daughter learned the same thing in dance. My, and my oldest learned the same. She was color guard marching band. She learned the same thing in that. And my youngest daughter learns the same thing in musical theater. The, the, the principle is the same across the board. You have to go as, as a person who's teaching class, as a master trainer, as a coach. You have to go almost to the point where you feel like a dork. That is where you want to be. I have to go so hard when I'm teaching class to get my class to go about 75 or 80%, almost to the point where I feel like a dork. So you have to share so much that you almost feel like a dork and then you're where you need to be. That's where you should be. So you have to go 100% into a program and the nutrition. You have to share like crazy share. You have to not freaking care what anyone else thinks when I was doing max 30, when I was learning how to do turbo, when I was trying to become a master trainer, you know, all of these programs that have had this major effect on me, I was so in it and so loving it that I would just come, I would just post about it and not really care if anyone else cared. I just had to, it just had to come out of me. So it has to come out of you, you know, and transform 20, I felt was some, like I would talk about, I'm like, it's so good. It just has to come out of you. And then you just don't really care if anyone cares or not. And the people that care will care. And the people that find you annoying, you don't care anyway. Why would you want to be friends with someone who finds you annoying? Clearly you don't. So you have to go so much that it's almost annoying. So that is the third. I think you have one, two, second. You have to find the right personal development. And that means the one that's speaking to you right now. I had the 21 Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell on my bookshelf for some time before I picked it up in 2015, 2016. I had tried it a couple times. It wasn't until I picked it up at that time in 2016 that it really spoke to me because that's what I needed at that particular moment. I'd had The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg on my bookshelf for a while. It wasn't until like the end of 2016 somewhere in 2017 that when I picked it up, it spoke to me. So you have to find the right personal development. And that might mean picking up, putting down, picking up, putting down. Cause when it's right, you'll be like, I can't get enough of it. And I believe you need either a mentor or a success partner, someone who is not living in your home. And that, so that means that's not your spouse. They are not your success partner or your mentor. Someone who's not living in your home who can either and maybe both who can either give you a helicopter up view and give you some new fresh ideas or someone with whom you can partner who will push you. Those are all the pieces I think that need to come together to help you go to the next level. And when you find, when I'm on a plateau, which I kind of feel like we have been for a little while, which is okay. You can't be like blazing, you know, a hundred percent of the time. It's okay. Cause I think the plateau is, you know, Sean says that's the jumping off point. So that's the place where you sort of, figure stuff out and learn and grow. Um, I have to look at the pieces. What am I not doing probably? Well, I didn't really, I haven't really had a good mentor for a while. So what did I do? I took some action to fix that. So over the next three months, I'll probably see a change in myself, which means I'll see a change in my business. It doesn't go the other way around. It go, it always starts here. So you look at all those pieces and see if you're doing those pieces. And um, if you are, you know, tweak in there, maybe something's just not clicking on the cylinders for you. And for gosh sakes, don't make it more complicated than it is. Please don't get all emotional about it. It's really not that emotional. I mean, it is, but you know what I mean? Like, don't get all like, oh, God, I got to go down and work out. No, just get up and go work out. And then just go make your shake. And then just read your book. Stop making it like, I just don't know what I can get my personal development in. Yes, you do. Get up, go in your bathroom, brush your teeth, and press play on your audiobook. Stop making it such a thing. It's really not. And then those things are your habits, and then those little habits you know, change your life. Yes, they absolutely do. Um, okay, we're, got, we're almost, we've got like nine minutes left. So Aubrey had a question about the professional fitness side, the group fitness instructor. She said she's a fitness instructor too. And she said, I legit struggle with the professional fitness world taking Beachbody seriously. How do you incorporate and be freaking successful and awesome in both? A... The YMCA does not pay my bills or put my children through school. So I don't give what they think I'm going to go in and take, teach my classes and I'm going to love on my people 
and I'm not wearing their stupid YMCA blue shirt, no matter if, what they tell me, they're going to pay me the $11 and I'm going to tell those people that if they want to connect with me more, to connect with me on social media. And I, I mean, my why people knew when Jenna was applying to college. They knew when she graduated from college. They knew when Josie had her. They brought food last year when Josie had her first surgery. Like, these are my people. I don't care what the why says. Those are my people. So I am there to serve and love and give my people an experience. And I don't care if the why takes me seriously or not. Because I'm really not looking necessarily for those other fitness instructors. I'm looking for the people in my classes to be my challengers and coaches. I don't really care. You fit the fitness instructors that are there. They're lovely people. They're lovely people. They're great humans. And they're going to make $11 an hour. And I'm not. So, but you know, who doesn't want to make $11 an hour? That woman of three, the mom of three, who's right here in my front row, who loves fitness, who joined the Y because it was affordable and her kids can take lessons there. Her husband has a, a you know a good job, but she knows that there's got to be more than just just being a stay-at-home mom. That's who I want. I don't care about the fitness instructors that are there. I want the people in my classes. So I'm going to go out and just love on the people in my classes. And when I walk in to teach on Saturday morning, I want them to feel like it's freaking Disney World. I want them to feel good when they come in because they know what they're going to get. And I want them to feel like they could conquer the world when they leave. That's how I create connection with them. That's how I'm going to get them into my challenge group. Because then they want more of that. I don't care about the people who are actually working there. Because they're going to be working there five years, ten years from now. I'm not. <laughs> I love it. True that. Bree asked, what do you do to continue to develop relationships that lead to potential challengers? Basically. That's a great question because I'm not teaching as much. And that's funny because I've been having this conversation with with you know, some of my mentors and with myself for a while, because when I was teaching, I was in front of people a little bit more. So how do I do this? And I am, I'm working to try to develop different new platforms. Okay. That's fun. That's cool. And that's evolution to me. That's how I stay excited and, and invested in the business. So I'm thinking, okay, is it going to be a Facebook group platform. I, I revamped my website. Is that going to help draw people in? I'm really thinking, I think I'm going to do a podcast, which is kind of cool and scary to me. So I might do that. So I'm constantly trying to think of new ways. Of, can I find more, more ways to do like one-off fitness events? Can I go to local businesses and teach a one-off class for them? Can I go to a local business and maybe speak for them? So if I'm not going to teach as much, then part of my quest, part of my mission has to be, how do I get in front of more people? Because I think that human connection uh, works for me. Other people might be able to find it virtually, you know, or in other ways, mommy and me groups or whatever that might be. I, I never was in a mommy and me group uh, and am not going to be in one now, but it might work for other people. And that's where you should. So I have to think, we each have to think wh where is kind of my wheelhouse and where can I get in front of more people in some way, human, live or virtual. And then how can I make connections with them? So that's, I'll keep you posted on that because that's kind of my, my mission right now is how can I get in front of more people maybe in a different way without teaching 15 classes a week anymore? Cause that's not happening anymore. I love that. It really is unique to everyone. There's obviously social media is so powerful, but you are very much a people person. Like you love that connection and that works mm -hmm. for you. So I love that. You're just like, okay, what now yeah. I'm, changing, I'm evolving. Things are not always going to be the same. I'm not in front of all these people. So where can I find them? I love it. Yeah. Um, okay guys, anything else? We've got just a couple minutes. This has been so good, Julie. I just so appreciate you. Yay. It's just fun to have a different voice. I bet, you know, like you, when you spoke on so they're like, Oh my God, I love her. I'm like, I know. So it's just good to have a different voice. True. Always so good. So how many of you come? Will I see this summer? I mean, will I see you all this summer in Indianapolis? Party in my backyard. I know. <laughs> Is anyone doing the Transform 20 certification on Wednesday? If not, you should think about that. Really, really consider that. Um, it's certifications at Summit are a little bit of their own animal. They're kind of crazy and kind of chaotic, but they're also a really cool special experience. So if you're, you know, if you liked Transform 20, really consider getting certified in it, even if you never teach a class, because just the 
the proximity to that much positivity, you get in a room with all these people who, you know, are loving group exercise and you're learning about fitness and you're getting educated, it makes you a better coach, whether you ever teach or not. Any kind, anytime we can learn and learn, I think in person, not just virtually, I think, and then you talk to people and you have those conversations that makes you a better coach. So if you haven't thought about the certification, really, really, really consider it. Uh, it would be, it's well worth your time. You'll have great return on investment, whether you ever teach or not, it'll just make you a better coach. Love it. I love it. Well, I don't see any other questions. So we'll let you go. Thank you. Seriously, Julie, thank you so much for taking time to do this. I know your time is super valuable. Um, and we appreciate everything you said. Golden nugget. Thank Thanks for having me. You guys have a great, this is Thursday. Oh, I hope you have lots of celebrations today and lots of fun things to, to celebrate and recognize and talk about. And, um, you know, tag me on your Instagram and yeah. let me know if you had, had fun and, um, I'll see you. If you have any questions about Indianapolis, just message me on Facebook. Let me know. I'll do what I can to help you. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Have a great day. Bye, you guys.